What if aging wasn't inevitable? What if wrinkles, memory loss, and even death were just technical problems waiting to be solved? For most of human history, aging was a mystery and unstoppable force we simply accepted, but today, that narrative is changing. Scientists are unlocking the secrets of our cells, companies are pouring billions into age reversal, and visionaries are asking the unthinkable, could we live forever? This isn't science fiction anymore. It's science racing toward a future where aging might be optional. Today, we'll dive deep into the biology of aging, cutting-edge research, radical ideas for the future, and the big question, even if we could live forever. Should we? Every second, someone is born and someone else takes their last breath. It's the rhythm of life we've always known. A pattern so familiar, we rarely stop to question it. From the moment we're born, a silent countdown begins. Our cells divide, our organs work tirelessly, and slowly, very slowly, we begin to age. But what if aging isn't just an inevitable process? What if it's a series of biological mistakes? A set of mechanisms that, once understood, could actually be paused or even reversed. Around the world, biologists, geneticists, and tech pioneers are beginning to treat aging like a disease. One that can be studied, treated, even cured. This isn't just about living longer. It's about living better and longer. Imagine being 90 but with the health and energy of someone in their 40s. So, could we really live forever, or at least double our healthy lifespan? Is aging a puzzle we're finally beginning to solve, or a boundary we were never meant to cross? To answer that, we first need to understand what aging really is, how it works, and why it happens. Inside each of us, trillions of cells are working tirelessly. Dividing, repairing, regenerating, they're the microscopic engines of life. But over time, even the best machines wear down. At the heart of aging lies a tiny clock, telomeres. Every time a cell divides, these protective caps on our DNA get a little shorter. Until one day, they're gone and the cell can't divide anymore. It retires, or worse, it starts to malfunction. These retired cells don't quietly fade away. They linger, sending out inflammatory signals. They're called senescent cells, and over time, they poison their neighbors, contributing to diseases, wrinkles, even cancer. Meanwhile, our mitochondria, the cell's power plants, start to break down, producing less energy and more waste, our DNA suffers from repeated damage, and the body's repair systems start to lag behind. Proteins, those tiny workers that build and run everything, begin to misfold. And when they do, it's like giving the body bad blueprints. Diseases like Alzheimer's may begin this way. In short, aging is a cascade of breakdowns. A slow, complex, beautifully tragic unraveling of systems that once ran like clockwork. But here's the twist, each one of these aging processes is being studied. And in some cases, targeted if we can understand how aging works. Maybe we can find ways to slow it down or even reverse it. So, what is science doing about it? Let's look at the front lines of anti-aging research and meet the people trying to change what it means to grow old. Not long ago, the idea of slowing or reversing aging sounded like science fiction. Today, it's becoming a scientific pursuit backed by serious minds, serious money, and stunning results. Let's start small, like mouse small. Scientists discovered that simply reducing calories without malnutrition can extend lifespan in mice, worms, and even monkeys. It's called caloric restriction, and it flips a biological switch that tells the body survive longer. That discovery led to something bigger, understanding the pathways that control aging itself. Names like sirtuins, enter, and AMPK might sound technical, but they're like levers in our cells, levers we're learning how to pull. 
One of the hottest areas, an AD+, it's a molecule that powers our cells and it declines as we age. Boosting NAD+, and mice made their muscles stronger, their energy higher, even reversed some signs of aging. Then there's senolytics, drugs designed to clear out the zombie cells we met earlier. In early trials, they've improved physical function in older animals and even humans. Harvard professor David Sinclair believes aging is not just inevitable, it's treatable. He calls it a condition, one that can be delayed, managed, even reversed. Gene editing tools like CRISPR are letting scientists rewrite faulty instructions in our DNA, and experimental gene therapies are being used to rejuvenate tissues, regrow organs, and potentially reset the clock. In one astonishing breakthrough, researchers used Yamanaka factors, a group of four genes, to reprogram old cells into youthful ones. In mice, they restored vision. In the future, we might restore hearts, livers, maybe even entire bodies. Billion-dollar companies are now racing to crack the code. From Google's secretive Calico Labs to Alto's Labs backed by tech giants, the question is no longer if we can slow aging. It's how far we can go and how soon. But some scientists are looking even further beyond slowing aging toward radical life extension. What if we didn't just live longer but forever? Slowing aging is one thing, but it's just the beginning. What if we could regrow organs instead of replacing them? Scientists are already 3D printing heart valves, liver tissue, even skin. In the not-too-distant future, we might print a fully functional heart, tailored to your body, made from your own cells. Or imagine tiny nanobots, thousands of them, swimming through your bloodstream repairing damage, killing cancer, cleaning plaque from arteries, acting like a 24-7's maintenance crew for your body. Some call it longevity escape velocity, the idea that if we can extend life just a little longer now, future breakthroughs will keep pushing death further and further away. And then there are the radical thinkers, the mind uploaders. They imagine a world where your consciousness, your memories, yourself can be digitized transferred into a machine, not just living longer, but living without a body. It sounds like science fiction, but right now, researchers are mapping the human brain in stunning detail, training AI to mimic thought patterns, and asking, what exactly makes you, you? And what if you could hit pause on death altogether? Cryonics freezing the body or brain after death has been a dream for decades. A gamble that future science might bring you back. These aren't just wild ideas on forums, they're being funded, prototyped, tested. From neural interfaces to AI body symbiosis, we're inching toward the edge of biology and stepping into something entirely new. But with every leap forward comes new questions. If we could live forever, should we? The science is racing ahead, now it's time to ask what it all means. If death loses its grip on us, what happens to the meaning of life? So much of how we live is shaped by time. We rush, we love, we let go. Because we know our time is limited. But what if only the wealthy could afford to extend their lives? What happens when longevity isn't universal but exclusive? And then there's the planet, if people stopped dying. Would the Earth survive our numbers? Could our systems, our food, our climate, our politics keep up? Would a world full of 100-year-olds still working mean fewer chances for the young? Would innovation slow down or accelerate with a century of experience? Would endless life dull our sense of purpose? Would love, family, and memory feel the same when time no longer runs out? Some argue that mortality gives life meaning. That without an ending, there's no urgency, no story. The debate isn't just scientific. It's moral, spiritual, existential. The tools may soon be in our hands, but the choice will be in our hearts. So let's ask the final question one science can't answer alone. We've seen the science, the breakthroughs, the dreams of a future where death is no longer inevitable. But now comes the question that no microscope can answer. Should we live forever? Would immortality make us more grateful or less? 
Would we cherish each moment more deeply, or forget what it means to have only so few moments? Death gives life a boundary, a shape, a reason to begin, a reason to end. But what if we could stretch the journey, not in fear of death, but in celebration of life? Some say it's unnatural, others say nature is what we're here to overcome. There's no right answer, only the one you carry within you. Because in the end, the future of aging isn't just about technology, it's about what it means to be human. Aging, once seen as an unchangeable truth, is now becoming a question. We've learned that aging is not just wear and tear, but a process one that might be guided, delayed, even redesigned. From cellular reprogramming to nanotechnology, from gene editing to digital consciousness, we are building bridges to a future that once only existed in myths. But where that path leads is up to us, because science can give us tools, but it can't tell us what we should do with them. So we ask you, not just as a viewer, but as a fellow traveler through time, if you could live forever, would you? And more importantly, why? Drop your thoughts in the comments, like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to explore the future, it's free for you. Thanks for watching, stay curious and remember, the future isn't written yet.